All right, back here, right outside the gates here, TPC Sawgrass. Look who I found, George Gankus. How you doing, buddy? What's up, buddy? Hey, man, thanks, thanks for, for having me. me. Thank you for having me. GG Swing Tips, good chance that you've heard of that. You're blowing up, man. Where, where in the world did you come from? <laughs> I don't know. Just did some funny things on Instagram. And uh, my buddy, Danny Wax, who was on the tour, mm -hmm. um, he said, you gotta get on Instagram. It was about five years ago, and he said, you know, I said, I don't get on social media. And he's all, no, you got to do it. He's all, just do some funny stuff and just do some golf vids, some information stuff. And your players are blowing up your juniors. And so I just did it. Yeah. And, and, and it went, you know, I got a lot of haters at first and I still do, <laughs> but it, it was good. And then all of a sudden things just went my way, I guess. Hey, you're doing good, man. I love Thank it. You. Uh, and I watch it. And I've talked about some of your players on the golf channel and broken I, them down. You, you did know. a great job. And Troy, and Trey Mullins, long drive champ there. Troy Mullins kills the ball. She kills it. And she you does. have a lot, of, like your players, I mean, they hit it. I mean, you, you create a lot of speed with the way that you're teaching the pivot, which we'll get to here in a second. Uh, mm -hmm. But I know you've got some players in the field right now here at the Players' Championship, and I want to get to them. You've worked with Sung Kang a long time, Danny Lee, but you're also working with now Adam Scott. Is that right? Yes. Good. Yes. How's that going? It's, it's great. I mean, the, the guy already hits the ball good. It's not like I'm reinventing the wheel here. He's, uh, he's a baller, and he's a sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. And legitly people go well what are you going to do and i'm like really nothing but we changed his balance points a little bit and gave him a little more depth so he can rotate on the downswing because he wants to rotate but to be honest there's not a lot to do with as, as good as he swings it and he, his stats show it still so where'd you get those balance points i mean you we put them on the force plate get, no get no no I, I i have a thing where i have uh, just for a long time i fell upon balance points so armpits for a lot of my players okay. would go on their toes, okay? So their armpits would be over the toes and everybody stands up that has their armpits on their toes. And if they don't, they don't rotate through the shot. So if you get a guy on his toes, he will always hump through the ball. And if not, they stay there and they don't turn. Okay. So you got two things, you either chunk it or hit it all over the place, or you stand up. And either one, if you're standing closer, you're gonna get your shaft real steep, your arms are gonna get behind you. So people are trying to get you know, their, their arms back out in front mm -hmm. of them but really you fix their setup and all of a sudden they start to turn their shaft shallows out and, and they rotate through the shot. So it's a no brainer that either your armpits are too far back and you fall forward and then you hump or you're too far over and you jump. And that all stems from when people have a really straight back. Mm. So a lot of guys were top good posture and the only way to get to the ball is to get your armpits over your toes. So taller guys got around. That's why you see LPGA players have pretty good posture. Rory, he's on the shorter end. Mm -hmm. Some good guys that really have good balance points, but that's with straight backs. It's because they, like Adam Scott, his armpits were on his toes. So he was too far out of this? Yes, and he backed up about this okay. much, and he didn't like it, but why did he back up that much? And where did he play the ball? He played it off the hosel, okay. and as he came in, he didn't have to constant, uh, uh, compensate by throwing his angles. So, so was, you got he his had balance a good matchup. better there. You kind of got him. him but then back. his ball's on the sweet spot. Okay. So it's just a matchup. He was already matched up by backing away from it. He just didn't like the look of it. Okay. So and like better. the feel of it. Okay. It's better, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, well, hopefully, you know, he does what he needs to do in, in his putting and, and wedges. And this week he changed to a longer putter, or last week he did, and he started putting better, so that's cool. Good. So where all this come from? We're going to get to the leg action and all that, and you can show that balance point here in a second. But where did this leg action and this rotation and this bounce, but where, where did it start for you and, and how, how have you kind of evolved with this? Well, I'm originally a slider and, and I used to stick things in front of my leg to try not to slide. I still am a slider. I, I do everything I can do to, to not slide. Okay. So um, once I realized that, you know, you can get pressure forward originally, Mac O'Grady used to get the left knee around, mm -hmm. okay? So I would watch a lot of old school players, like Sam Snee was one of my favorite players. His knees went external both legs. Like we used to, like I used to watch David Lever back in the day drop balls out of his knees. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, hey, I made this up. I just, for some yeah. reason, people think I did. Right. But really what I was doing is just understanding that pressure can get forward with getting the lead side of your pelvis down, okay? And, and the way you do that is by getting the left knee to go external more into flexion. And then all of a sudden your upper body goes forward so you have some right little bend to keep you centered as you turn mm -hmm. and they offset each other. So knowing that, I also see a lot of Jamie Sedlowski's a lot of speed move. Like he's not going too far forward, hardly any linear motion at all. It's, it's, it's amazing. So he's my speed model. So yeah. if I was gonna copy some people, I'd say I copied a lot of Rory when he first came out. He was a squatter, a lot mm -hmm. of Tiger, yep. um, a lot of Sam Snead, a lot of, of, of Jamie Sedlowski. Okay. 
Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a no brainer. Okay, well let's get up and show these people how to do it. Okay. All right, so let's get into this. I want to talk balance points first as we were alluding to, and then I want you to take me on the downswing. Okay, cool. All right, let's do it. So when we look here, his armpits, the back of his armpits are over on his toes. If he took it to the top and stayed in this angle, go top, and then you start it down, you'd immediately, there's very little rotation for most players. Most mm -hmm. players go to the top again from those balance points are gonna to wanna to create balance here and they're gonna to wanna to stand back up, okay? Now, the more he stands up, the more to get to the ball, he's gonna throw angles mm -hmm. just to get to the ball, okay? So a lot of players, so I'll demonstrate right now. So when you look at like someone who has really good posture here and they don't have any rounding in the back and that's what we were all taught, we'll always compensate armpits out in the toes. And so immediately most players are gonna go this way and a lot of players will move back immediately to balance. Now they're further away from the ball so either they're gonna go drive and get it or they're gonna throw their arms at the ball, okay? okay? okay. And a lot of guys are, tend to be in to out and throw their arms to get it anywhere to hit the sweet spot. So that's probably one of the biggest things that I see is players out here or even too far back, they sit back and then they move forward and then they throw their arms behind them, their shaft gets steep. And we got a lot of players saying, oh, just get it out here. Now they miss the ball, mm -hmm. okay? So you could change your shaft immediately in transition if you change your balance points, which is, saves you a lot of time. Okay. So movement. And you can rotate too a lot better. Yeah, because I'm, you said you're a bit of a slider and I was too. That's yes. kind of the era we grew up in, yes, right? Yes, 100%. And we slide, can't get out of the way, we lose and it, I, and we can up. still play that way too. Yeah. I mean, your swing direction is just a little more right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your angle of attack's a little more down, and unless you're standing up. But those, those are things that then we got to figure out how to you know, control our face, and that's hard. Mm -hmm. But it's doable. It is, yeah. So that's why people, a lot of people think, oh, there's this guy doing it. They're, yeah, you can do it. I did it. I played all right. You played all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's ring me down now. Okay. All right. So, so gonna... from this, for, so from the start. Okay. Let's talk about one thing. So why don't you face the camera first? Okay. Face it. So why don't you move off the ball a lot? Okay. Just, boom. Okay. So if anybody tried to actually do my leg work from here, they're going to be on their back foot. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's not going to work. Okay. They're going to get stuck on their back foot. So there are players that I have that move off the ball, and those are the players that have a late like extension in the mid spine thoracic here, and they'll actually start to drift and get here. But if you move to the top, go to the top and move off the ball. If you move off it, a lot of my players are going to want to slide back here. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right off the bat. But the guys who go move off the bat and then they go into a late thoracic, boom, then all of a sudden they can sit right under them and turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean you can't move off the ball. You can, because there's so many guys who've been success successful, right. but without sliding or pushing off the trail leg, guys who move off, I would say, have a tendency to move back to here to that are successful. The guys who get off here and start pushing or squat, yeah. both are dead. So that, that, so lot of, match up. that lot of side bend, right? No good. No good for anybody. Unless you match it up late. Unless you match it be, up late. Because, I mean, I, I love to get some late thoracic. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. But the fact, it's more powerful. But besides that, there are some players that I have seen that can dig back here without getting the left side of the pelvis high, right. and they're successful. But, so that's why I can't say you can't move off the ball. Yeah. You can't do it. You has gotta match it up. You gotta match it up. Right, okay. So. I'm, here I am, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm a little bit of a spitter. Okay, like, so in the backswing. I'll hang left. I like that, yeah. okay. I don't yeah. mind it because legit. You like the space. I don't mind, no, so like I said, there's a matchup. So if mm -hmm. there's a guy over here, he's gonna have to come into some, some real Wait. late extension here okay. and really dig in the thing. But mo I don't see many people who can do it, okay. But the guys who I do have create some space in both sides, how much more do they have to push? They don't, they can just dig in the ground now. Okay. All right, let's talk that dig. Okay. All right, so talk how I wanna, I wanna grip the ground here. Okay, so go to the top okay. and, and get more into your, your backswing we're talking about there. So you have some late extension yeah. here. Down so the, the pressure's here. So from the first move down, I like to get this lead side of the pelvis lower and this wouldn't come in yet, right there. And you have some right little bend. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to right bend, front bend also. So you're getting into the ground right there. Right. Now, from here, we still have leverage with the ground, meaning we can continue to use the ground to turn. Mm -hmm. So when I get a player to push immediately, there's no lever, there's nothing left to the ground, mm -hmm. so I can't turn. But if I still have some energy to the ground, I could still run, I can yeah. move. And if I can't move because I've already pushed off the ground, that's why a lot of my players don't have a lot of knee flexion in the back because mm -hmm. they want to extend and then there's nothing left. Right. It's not a launch. It's not a launch. It's it, not a launch. There's other sports for that. Yeah. Like if you're, you know, you're shot putting or something that yeah. you're going to get up in the air, but yeah. we're hitting more on the down. You know, I think like what I love about this is I think the golf swing forever was taught lateral, yeah. then rotary. Yeah, 
Right. That's what I was taught. Right. So now it's it's you can you can rotate as you're going lateral. Yes. Like it, as you're falling left. But the coolest part yeah. about it is that as we do it, as we're over here and we sit and turn, boom, the yeah. shaft goes right here. Mm -hmm. If we do the same thing when we go here, this shaft mm -hmm. never turns unless you manually go into external rotation. Mm -hmm. So my guys don't manually go into externally rotate. They don't externally rotate the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they don't have to rotate the forearms, or they don't have to go into ulnar inflection, or ex, I mean, into ulnar inflection. Yeah. They don't have to do that. So the thing is, is once they're set up over here, they can sit and turn, and the shaft is right where it needs to be. Yeah. Which is really, in a nutshell, all you need to do is get get the shaft on line and turn. You know, I like it. I, I think you know, you simplify the downstream for people. You don't. It's not. You don't bump. No. Stay in a lot of right bend and turn. You know, it's it's the, the weight's falling, and you're starting to grip the ground and, yeah. and, and recruit earlier in the downswing, so then you can do something with it 100%. through the impact zone. One more thing, I want you to talk about the club and the hands up here. One of the things I like, and I've, and I've watched some of your videos, is, is kind of turning into the lead arm. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. And because I think that's a really good turn sensation. Face yeah. into it. Okay. So this what, because have, this goes with the lower body wax. So I have a lot of my players say, go to the top. And I set up, and I, I get a lot of my players over here mm -hmm. just for more speed, okay? So I get this forearm parallel spine, this parallel ground, and it's not mandatory by any means, but it's a lot more speed. So when I say start down, start down, see the pressure you put on my hand? Mm -hmm. I don't want any pressure on that, okay? I want pressure here, start down, rotate, boom. Now where's your shaft going? Rot keep rotating. Laying down. Yeah, it's laying down by itself, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the cool part. That right shoulder will go external. This whole humerus bone will go back internal, mm -hmm. okay? It'll go back this way all by itself. So the turning of the body and leaving the arms up are what is, what's actually doing this. So if we threw a ball right now, we would never go like this and this. I would actually spin my chest and that thing would go external by itself if you ever throw in a ball sidearm. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that we think we have to put it in positions. And I think the biggest problem that I see from players is we see positions in still frames from what, P1 to, uh, down to P7 impact. Yeah. And we're trying to hit these positions when these positions happen. Right. So. Let's recap here for a second for our viewers, right? Work the lower body, like mm -hmm. get, get yourself where, as we were demonstrating there, where you can feel the lead hip kind of work, you know, stay down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you do that good. Right, and start to grip the ground this way. Now, if you go too internal too early, go back, where's right. your pressure? My it's pressure? all on your right foot. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Back, yeah. Yeah, and that's here. because the right knee has gone too quick in. So we could either push okay. or we go internal and we're dip all our pressures back. So right. that's the problem. When people think they're pushing pressure forward, they're pushing it this way, and if you just go like this, where's pressure? Yeah. Forward. Yeah, forward. And my spine moves this way, so I move it this way, so I'm centered as I do it. So it's pretty simple yeah. conceptually. It's just different. It is. It is different. But I, but conceptually, and as a recap here, I think gripping the ground, right? Kind of gripping the ground here, and, and, and having some stability here, right? With this down. Yeah, like you I, can I, run still. Yeah, I do feel something. like I'm into the ground. I can do whatever I want you from can. here. Like I can do something from here now and rotate and hit it, and my weight continues to go forward. Yes, with it, it does. I, I can, push later, so don't think that I don't push. Yeah, I just push later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not you're not bumping and launching. Yeah, well, there, well, so we call this a bump. Yeah. We call this internal rotation. We call this a push. So we can have all those, and we're dead. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is we're getting pressure down, and then we're pushing and turning. So they're really we're still getting to the same place. Yeah. We're just not going this way, then turning. We're still getting into this impact wall. So it's not like I'm sitting on my back foot, and I think a lot of people. Probably think that. So I like that. I like that for the lower body. And then I like how this up here, as you're recruiting that way, now you can sense how you're turning more into the lead arm yep. and how the shaft starts to lay down early in the downswing, which really goes together and sets the stage to turn the gas on through. That's impact. it. That's all. I mean, that's that's all anyone's ever done over time that's been any good is they've got the shaft to lay down and they turn. Right. And so then you just got to get pressure forward to compress it. It's good stuff. That. It's really good stuff. Appreciate your time, my man. Thank you for having me. It's George Gankis, one of the best out there. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And remember, leave a comment if you have any questions. And most importantly, subscribe right here to Travis Fulton Golf so I can help you with your game long term.